But it was very inaccurate. It was written that she actually gained weight after the treatment. Before the treatment, she weighed less than after. And actually, uh, in the picture, the it looks the opposite. Exactly. Oh, no, the picture was definitely opposite. No, it was the opposite. But in the in the table, when they read in, like before the treatment, and after uh, it was, she that. kind of gained weight after the treatment, which yeah, doesn't make sense. Suddenly. Yes, okay. So what I did was, because she, 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 she was 10 when she got hit by a car, then the tissues of her body is not going to expand more, as freely because still holding in a contractive state because of the trauma. So as she is developing, and because the skull, as I said, is three modified vertebra, um, you start with the spine. The spine is included in the skull. So I started her, treating her supine through her skull and then working my way down mm -hmm. to the impact point. Yeah. I think that's what helped a lot, <coughs> as we saw by the research experiments in the back. Yeah. So you saw her? I thought it was quite interesting. Um, yeah. But what I'm saying is that, that we don't trust our own instincts. We have to I have. Think, I think there definitely are methods even now to see the effect of that. Seven. I've only seen it seven times. And that's not every week. Mm. Because even those like uh, thermal scanners or something. Yeah. I don't know what they call these machines. I think even during the treatment, you can. Do it's, the it's good feedback. This is feedback, which is good. Feedbacks. It's good. It's good. I mean, there are there are probably other ways of measuring the effectiveness of osteopathic treatment besides just doing the RCTs. But there are. Um, but what they want to do in the osteopathic treatment is, which techniques did it? Yes. Right. Well, that doesn't count. No. Doesn't count. And this, because they see, because they see the technique as being the osteopathic issue. And I say no, it's not. It's the consciousness of the osteopath that's the osteopathic issue, and that you can't measure. Mm. Yeah. And that's where the problem lies. And, and again, measurement is truth. So, so we're told. So, um, measurement is a truth. <coughs> mm. But, uh, but no, it's it's, it's interesting. But the, the uh, so I did, yeah, all I did was work my way through. I started at one end, just, just work my way through, just doing stuff, and she was obviously better. Mm. And she wants to, and she can fit. She feels better as well after. Her mum said she was lighter when she leaves mm -hmm. here. It's just a case of you know just working through it without having any preconceived model or you know it wasn't, it wasn't so much conceptual thinking. Um, I think conceptual thinking is the would, would be right hemisphere background thinking, and intuitive would be left hemisphere in front of you thinking, doing as you're doing it. Um, but yeah, the, 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 you haven't heard of three modified vertebrae in the skull. So basically, the, when the um, Goethe said all his vertebrae, well, this is one of his quotes about, <coughs> about mammals. And when he said all his vertebrae, it didn't mean that all his the vertebra. It means about segmentation. So segmentation begins at about T2, T3 in the embryo, and you get the somite formation. That somite formation continues into the head. The, the head develops out of its own somites in that region. So therefore, he said all his vertebrae, because that's where, that's where segmentation starts. So the frontal bone is the first cranial vertebrae, the, the, the um, parietals are the second and the occiput is the third. Okay? And then um, the vertebral bodies are the basi sphenoid from the ethmoid going straight through. There's, there's a junction in it. They found remnants of a uh, disc which, which actually um, dissolves as the embryo develops, it, it disappears. And then from in the, the skin and bone? No, in the skull, the base of the skull. So if, if you're looking into the base of the skull, you'll see the frontal area in two sections, in the parietal and the occipital. occipital. When you're looking down the, into the, if you take the, the vault of the skull off and look down into the top, and you see the junction point between the sphenoid and the occiput is another intervertebral disc in the embryo which disappears. So it's there historically, it's there, okay? And then the third um, um, uh, vertebral, well, I suppose, disc, disc and body is between C1 and C2. So the dens of C2 um, is part of C1, okay? But the, 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 the ligament across the dens in C1 is the divertebral disc of the last vertebra. So, so, so the base of the skull is not the occiput and C1. The base of the skull is C1 to C2. Yes. Yeah, the dent just pointing upwards to the skull, 
but its body's staying down. So in fact, it's between C1 and C2 that is the base of the skull, not the occiput. So what is the between the occiput and C1? It's, it's part. It's part of the part of the occiput, but it's flat. C1 is flat. So between C1, the dent is unique. Uh, sorry, C2 is unique because his body stays down because that's all the rest of the vertebral bodies in C3, C4, C5, C6. But the dent is pointing up mm. to the skull, so that's actually part of C1 embryologically. Yeah. So those intervertebral discs in the skull develop in the embryo, but they, they disappear in the, when the embryo becomes the fetus, and the fetus becomes the newborn, it disappears. So what they did was, um, Goethe started this all off by being in Italy and kicked a sheep skull and saw it, just, it, was, it was rattling it around. An old skull in the, in the mountains, and it's like, hang on, this is three vertebrae. I can see that. I can see the jump. I can see it. The three sections. Then um, Charlotte Weaver was asked by A.T. Still to extend the principles to the head, and she came up with the idea that the, 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 the skull is modified vertebrae. And all her work is in the library here, but no one's, no one's ever looked at it. I mentioned it in 2000 in the book I wrote. So, and then came um, a Dr. Aaron Fuller, Fuller, or Fuller, who wrote a book. Called the, the Upright Ape, which was published a few years ago, and he came up with the idea that it was three, verte three modified vertebral skulls. No cranial people have ever told me this. So, does that change anything in our treatment? Oh, massively. I'm treating vertebra. Same as I'm treating the spine. Same so thing. Think, so, is it makes It goes beyond the phenomenon because the cranial concept is one of the primary respiratory mechanism and, and involuntary mechanism, which I don't go into that level. I don't need to. That to me is conceptual. Yeah. I'm treating the vertebra. I'm treating the skull as vertebra. So, what do cranial osteopaths think when they're treating the skull? I think they're, 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 they're looking for motion, right. expansion, contraction, with movement through the skull. It moves to all different levels. But I'm going purely on an anatomical basis. But if it changed embryologically, I mean, it was a vertebra, but it is not now. So this is interesting because um, Goethe was the person who found the link between man and apes. And he found it in what he called the, um, it's now called a Goethe's bone. It's now called the in intermaxillary bone, okay? Which isn't there in humans, but it's there, it's there in the fetus and disappears. But it stays in the monkey. It's up here. Into, it's, it's top of the roof of the mouth, right? So, what we're seeing here is embryological phases that are similar to other animals, but we carry on passing on to another level. Does that make sense? Yeah. So certain things will appear and disappear. Mm -hmm. So he found the intermaxillary bone on top of the roof of the mouth, which is present in apes. It's not present in human beings, but it's present in a human fetus. And disappears. So, but again, I mean, even if we acknowledge that, we know that it's three different vertebra but it's it was it's not, it's not there anymore it's fused right but so, it's not so much fused it's morphology is still there this is between morphology this is that's what that's all about morphology and form that's morphology is its movement or form is its movement okay the bone we, we see things as moving as in the ready humeral joint or being a humeral joint of moving but the bone is actually moving by its form. If you, if you, if you look at a timeline, okay, if you look at evolution through time, this is why evolution is important for us, well, it is important, no one, no one ever teaches it. If you look at the way the human form, skeletal form, has changed, it's moving over millions of years. But what we're seeing in skeletal form in the present is the end product of a very slow movement process. Yeah? So we can't move, you couldn't bend your arm by muscular action unless the form to potentially move was already there in the, sh in the mm -hmm. shape of the bone. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the form is issue. So we'd go back to the skull again. If it was three vertebrae, we know this, this vertebral movement there in its form, that's what I'm treating. I'm, I'm, I'm going with the form, with the shape, knowing that it actually these, these joints were there and they've gone now. But they're, they're not moving... Yet. As such, in the human skull, they're moving through the process of evolution. Is that what you Yes, say? and also, don't, but don't forget, bone is not solid, it's, it's pliable. 
So you think I've got, you know, and, and every time you squeeze a bone or sit on a bone, or, it, it changes biochemically because it's alive. So the forces I put through things will alter things biochemically. We always talk about manipulation from a ma machine point of view. Mm. We never talk about it from a biochemical point of view. And the two are, are reciprocal. It's a bit like saying the difference between anatomy and physiology is time. Physiology is fast anatomy. Anatomy is slow phys physiology. So you get to a functional point of view. When does function become structure? It doesn't. At which point? It doesn't. It's, it's reciprocal. It, it, this, is, this is just language. Well, we don't have any studies made for that to see you know, the exact effect of what happens when you touch one, let's say, compressing here or something. Mm. There's already something is changing there. Absolutely. All the time. We don't know. I mean, what is exactly happening by chemistry there? Well, anything. Well, acid changes, acid base change. You put pressure on your finger on your forehead and push hard. Any acid base changes because the circulation is going to be disturbed a little bit, yeah? so it's not clearing as much. You get metabolite buildup. Well, well, that's interesting. Because that happens to the whole body, anywhere. Because if you, if we were talking about the treatment and we we're thinking about the problematic area and keeping it in mind while treating, then you can, you would choose your own, uh, how to say, reference point where you want to start. Because I might start with Georgias, let's say abdomen, or I might think about cells in her body when I'm changing, which is mad. It just, you can just, it's just blow the mind probably, you just, you can treat her in atoms. No, no, fine. But I'm saying you, should, yeah, you, you, can, have, you can do that. You have that thought process. Yes, exactly. That's reductionism, that's what I'm saying. So, but if you're a whole, then technically it doesn't matter where you start. As long but, as you're making an effect, you know. But, I mean, it might have an effect, we don't know. In what areas do I keep in mind? I might keep in mind a knee. I might keep an eye on the knee joint, which is made of like three bones, four bones. I can keep in mind just the physiology of that area, and it's a completely different treatment. In a way, it is, but if the mind is, is the focus on a different part, then the treatment is going to be different. Absolutely. Let's try to do an experiment. Absolutely, whatever you do. Yeah. This is going to be mad for me. Mad, okay. It's going to, be, it's going to blow my mind for me. Yeah. So now, look, same thing, no? Mm -hmm. So now, I'm on the bone, mm -hmm. and my attention now is on the bone, and now it's my attention is again on um, me feeling the bone. So again, I feel like there's a little bit of tension there in the elbow, and same thing, but now a little bit more on around that bad part, somewhere mm -hmm. shoulder, oh. you can't feel that, but, but now... Where you place your thought process, or where you're thinking? I'm, I'm just now myself, like, yeah, catching yeah. myself in the but now, I'm going to shift my attention to herself, <laughs> let's try to do that, that's going to be fun. <laughs> <coughs> but then it'll, it'll feel different again. Oh, yes it does. It kind of feels like a little bit of spiral, and this one actually goes into the abdomen there. Is that painful, uncomfortable? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Probably that's what you mean. No, this is no, real. I have that sauce. You have that sauce, no? Yeah. On that side, by side. Both sides. Sorry, it's kind of, it just, it just dissipates everything. It's more there now. Can you feel that? So what you 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 you're going to the you going to, what you're doing is going to the whole through the part, which is what we're supposed to do. But every part is the whole. So it doesn't matter where you put your hand, as long as you that's just a vehicle through which to put things into context. So you can jump to another part of the body, which is what I do. I might get someone's right wrist in my hand, examine it, and say, actually, we we'll just check that neck on the right, or check this, or check that, because I can feel it through the wrist. Yes, it's like you make a connection, basically. You Context. Can... I mean, when you're treating a patient, this is a connection, anyways. Yeah. No, 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 don't use the word connection, because it gives the impression of separateness to start with, and then putting something together, so it becomes a contradiction because you're not separate. You're not. You're, not, you're living in the same world. No, but it, it just it, if you just become aware of that, like let's say cells, then it just like it, it changes. Just, yeah, oh, it just completely changes. Well, that's what but I'm saying. Then, but your hand, as I'm saying, is your mode of your mode of consciousness is, is, is the key issue to success. 
and this is what I've been trying to last past for years. It's not the technique, they've reduced it to multiple techniques. But your mode of consciousness is so important, how you're thinking. So your background knowledge of history of science, of how things work, is vitally important. But look, Dennis, now I'm going to say something very, very interesting. Remember last time I talked about the layers, which, you know, yeah, yeah. there are those layers, and at that end point of all those layers, there is this oneness, isn't it? So if you actually shift your attention into oneness through the part, transcending all the layers, and just getting in touch with that phenomenon directly, or experiencing that's it, yeah. Gonna, that, that's just mind blowing, I think. But then again, you mustn't again you mustn't lose the phenomenon. You mustn't lose your direction. That's okay now. Because you want to do something, you want to achieve something. So when I'm in my sports medicine clinic stuff. You know, when I give someone three minutes to make a change, you've got to be directed. You, you've got to make a judgment. This is what Gertz was saying. It's about judgment, not just wandering all over the place. Because I see people doing, you know, cranial work, whatever, and they're lying there for like half an hour, 40 minutes, and I'm saying, what are you doing? I have to sleep a long time ago. But it's like, make it, make it intuitive. Go at it. Go at it as an experience, not a thing to go at. Sometimes it takes time to think of what you feel. Actually. Well, it's practice. It's, it's only practice. I feel there's something in the use, use, use the example of water, okay? Use the example of water. The, the harder you grip, it just goes through your fingers. Yeah? So you want to leave your hands slightly open. Same with, same with your thought processes. I, I didn't hear anything you said, sorry. That's okay, it's a bit like water. If you're holding it in your hand, you squeeze, it goes away. So it's a bit like thought processes are the same. Don't grab too hard. Don't try and objectify something. Stay alert. Mm. That's too uncomfortable, you know? Bit, so, so it's about being dis disciplined and being direct and not going all over the place. I don't know what I just said. No, but, okay, so now we have to do what we have to do over the next couple of years for you is make you work out how you're doing it so you can so you can so you can know what you've done. You haven't done it which we you know, we're going through this method now discussing it, but it's taken me 30, 34 years. So that's years. what I'm saying, is getting back again. I've done the treatment, I've done something, and but, it's then... Okay, now, we, we, yeah, right, so now you come back and think about right. it. What did you do that is unnecessary? Which was unnecessary. Which was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. How? How could you focus directly onto something you've done it within 30 seconds rather than four minutes? The latest still was to find it, fix it, leave it alone. He could do it quite quickly. Find it, fix it, leave it alone. Mean don't give drugs, don't over, overdose people with medication. At the same time, you know, you have it, to find that one spot. Well, not, not one spot, because you'll never find it again in another patient. But what was the method? I'm not talking about what you did that was wrong or or did unnecessary next time. What I'm saying is how I'm working on you as, <clears throat> as a practitioner yes. and saying, right, what could you have done? This is the patient, twelve o'clock. What, what could you? How are you doing it that could, that could have been faster, more efficient? Not what did you do that was wrong or right, or but how were you doing it? How you th what, what was your thinking that could have been changed to make it more efficient, more direct? That's a good question. I don't know. Because it feels like what I'm doing is right. I know it's not wrong, it's not, it's not, this is not a moral issue, I'm saying it's No, wrong. I know what you say. I'm what I'm saying is how are you doing it that you could have made it, that you could have made yourself more efficient, faster, more, more direct. Just act faster probably. No, no, there's no space-time phenomenon in that, in the natural world, in the natural world. So basically what it is, is, is knowing the, the direct method, because I, I haven't actually given you the method yet of how to do it. <coughs> yeah, um, I mean, I get, I get what you say. Like, I know. What, what you're talking about now is the what. You're still stuck in the what you did, not how you did it. No, I'm talking of, I'm, I'm thinking of how I did it, and I'm thinking of how could I've done it better. And I don't know because it felt that what I had been doing then was a right thing to do. No, it is the right thing to do. As an overall method, it's the right thing to do. But within that, how to improve it? How to improve it? To be more faster, to be more efficient, straight to the point. So that's what I say. You just, just go straight to the point. I yeah. was, I had a delay. I think I kind of still wanted to 
think before doing something, what do I feel? Whereas I should do and then think backwards again. So no, 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 okay. So let's take it to the next level. So rather than say, what do you feel, and go backwards, why, why not deepen the experience while you're doing it? So what you do is you're, you're doing it and then thinking backwards, what, what I did, and, and go through it all. But what I'm saying is, with the how, and, and there's no time and things, so, so there is no reflection, okay? You, while you're in it, how could ca catch yourself in the act of doing it. So catch, catch yourself in the act of doing it. So hold, yeah, hold the wrist again, and just rather than palpate the wrist. Yeah, yeah, I'm not palpating the wrist. Right. You, you think, I just think, feel the tension there. Okay. So, there. so be aware of yourself doing, doing the treatment. If, you, if you're conscious of yourself doing the treatment, then it's, you're too late. If I'm conscious of myself doing the treatment, no, I'm too late. Yeah, yeah. If you're, conscious, if you're conscious of yourself doing the treatment, you're too late. I have to, be in, I have to be in the flow, basically. That's what you're no, saying. No, not flow. You should, be, you, you, you should catch yourself doing it. It's a bit like going to reach for pen, but don't reach, for, you never quite get to the pen. It's a, no, it's, that's what, it's, it is a flow. It's like a... If it's like a flow in the river, you're kind of going with the current. You are with the flow. Yeah, but you're upstream. I want you upstream, not downstream. If you if you concentrate on the wrist, you're palpating. That's downstream thinking. I want you upstream. I want you in the flow, not flowed, not flowed, as in finished flow. No, I in the flow. I, okay, I can just tell what I feel. That I feel that is tight, and I feel that is linked with the hip. Can feel it's linked there with the hip. Okay, so there. don't, so don't. Okay, now feel the right shoulder, feel to his right shoulder again. Now, think the hip in the shoulder. That's what you're actually doing. That's how you're doing. So how you're doing it is you think, try and th not so much. I don't, I don't like using the word visualize. Yeah. Okay. Think. Okay, I get what you say. Think the hip in the shoulder. Okay. And then I feel I, there is something. But that's how you're doing it. You, you, you're not. You're not putting a hand on the shoulder and then you're saying, oh, it's connecting to the hip. No, I, that's, how I, that's how I feel the process. I feel when I, I press on the wrist, it guides me to the there, to the shoulder, and from there, I feel there is some kind of guiding me into the hip. Right, that's so, so now think of the whole. Think of, think of it as a whole phenomenon. Think of the whole rather than yeah. what you're palpating in your hand. Okay. A whole, okay. So what uh, Craig Holridge was saying... So I keep... Her hole in my mind. No, basically. be her. Be her. Oh, that's... <laughs> no, but that's what, that's what Craig... See, Craig Holdridge, his last book was called Thinking Like a Plant. It was brilliant. So be her. Be her. Keep something in mind which I don't know. Don't worry about that. Just, just <laughs> okay. while you're palpating a wrist, be her. Be me. So you've got, to, you've got to get yourself to relax. You see, this is the thing. You've got to allow her into the system. So her wrist is coming softer, isn't it? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, because you're being her now. Now you're flow, you're relaxing, you're allowing her in to, in, into your experience. This is the thing, I don't want you palpating Georgia, I don't want you palpating her, I want you to be her, so you, you feel. So you, I'm like reflecting her? No, 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 that's too late. You're bouncing back again, no reflection. No, it's that, like a that, that becomes, image, basically. No, no, don't do that. That becomes re-representation, not presentation. Okay. We always re-represent everything. Okay, okay, I start getting it. Don't re-represent it. And it's not in the moment, it's before the moment. I get it. So what most people do is they stop moving. They stop moving their hands and their palpate and they just freeze. Still didn't, he kept going. You've got to, you've got to keep moving your hands. Because most people just freeze when I, when I do this when they go boom, we just freeze, they don't move at all. We've got to keep moving. And it's difficult to do. It's a bit like pedaling a bicycle and talking at the same time and juggling. It is. But that's the, that. That's why not everyone does it. That's why. That's why not everyone can do it. That's so interesting. But the important thing is the method. So I'm trying to tell the French later on the next year, the scientific method of coming in. I mean, the word science, scientia, doesn't mean to know. It means to come into knowing. It's a constant movement. I'm just doing a response. Yeah, well, you're, again, you must be disciplined with this. No, I am. I'm, I, everything is my conscious now. No. Right. It kind of just happens. So the underlying method is your mode of consciousness. That's, that's the method. 
That's sort of interesting. <laughs> yeah. Good. But then we don't want it to be loose. We don't want it to be open-minded. We don't want it. These, we want it a series of judgments. Mm. Um, so now, how to get this judgment in the context? Be aware of doing it. So of how you're doing it. So. It's a, it's a, Emmanuel Kant called it intellectual intuition, Anschung, the Anschung, one of the German words. But it's, it's a case of you're doing it on purpose. Right. Yeah, because it's kind of, it feels wrong, that's why... It feels wrong to you. Yeah, that's yeah. why... It I makes want, you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, that's why I, that's what I want to, that, but that's what I want to do, I want to balance her, you see? No, don't, don't, don't try and straighten things out. It's, it's, flo it's dynamics, we want dynamics, so never stand still. And never stand still. We want to make sure that it doesn't. It, that, that these are areas that are not moving very well in the in the context of the, of the rest of the person. So it's a case of not. You want to keep just in that in mind. You want to keep it, get it moving. Not you want to correct it. Yeah. But the method is your mode of consciousness, which is, the, which is key to the whole thing. Rather than saying, "Show me a technique for something." Because that just shows that this is a series of this is what we call end products. Uh, there's something okay. interesting. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. How does that feel there? Mm. Hello? So what's the left cheek? Left maxilla. Mm. <sighs> yeah, the arch is tender. So it's leading you, but be attentive to leading you, not just I'm be jumping. passive. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm jumping steps. Yeah. But I don't know how to be active. To be active in the process, you've got to not get a, not, not move away from the past experiences of what you've been doing. Let it, let it theory build, build a, build an old Georgia, build a new Georgia, build a new one in your consciousness. Just stay stay focused. So not not focus is the wrong word. Stay aware of all the other areas you you've just been articulating or soft tissueing. Keep them all together. Don't because what we tend to do is we tend to go around the body. This yeah. bit and then that bit and this bit and that bit. Bring them all. You're, you're the centre of the consciousness, not, not the end of your hands. And that's how, that's how it happens. Because when I'm doing it as well, I'm, I'm being attentive. And I want to cut down the time factor. I want to cut down the hand contact. I want to go straight for whatever I need to do. And, and that just takes practice. You, you do less and less and less and less and less contact, actual hand contact. Sorry. And I'm just, yeah. I think in the beginning it's good to sort of what I call free wheel, just just like going for a walk in the park, just, just go for a walk. But then after a while we've got to, we've got to go somewhere. We can't just stroll around all the time. Yeah. But that's very. That's what I'm saying. It's like a mature maturity process. Yeah. I'm now in baby steps. Now. It's, it's experience. It's going back to the whole thing. But then you know now that because of your attentiveness. Attentive, attentive is not intentionality. Attent yeah. as, as you start getting building up on this experience, you'll go straight to places. <laughs> sorry, Jordi. <laughs> sorry, Jordi. <Jordan. laughs> I really want to apologize to you. Let's go. It's my fault. I'm in about a million tennis thoughts. Yeah, just that's life, man. Definitely. Yeah, better. Yeah. yeah. But that's it. So. so we, we, we would see that, we would normally see that from a technique point of view as being um, chaos, a chaotic treatment, yeah, just like going all over the place. But in fact it's not, it's a, it's, a, it's a theory building. It's theory building your treatment as you're going through. Any comments? Yeah, that was good. That was good. No more. Oh, wait. But again, you have this, always okay. you have this issue you know, with balancing yourself. Yeah. How is that now? You still want to balance. Or you still you feel more firmly rooted on the floor? I feel more firmly rooted. Because um, when she was always like sits or lays down, she wants to like cross the legs all the time. Yeah. Like with finding that. Just like. And I was there. Mm. Yeah. So, but so so that from an outside <coughs> point of view would just look unorganized, chaotic. And for me, it's also the same. Yeah. It just feels like well, it's I the forest, isn't it? It's the forest. You don't you don't tidy up the forest because you want to make it look nice. It's a forest. Mm. So then, what I what I do? I first took your wrist. I worked on your traps, and then. But that doesn't mean anything, now, is it? That's it. So it was that that. No, I'm trying to get back again yeah. through the forest. So then I was working, and it's that posterior chain. 
that crossing one and went, wanted to turn onto the right side because I turned you there. Yeah. And I was tender. So there was that that that's the chain, you see? That's that's definitely that chain of torsion. We didn't and you give it get, 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 get rid of that word chain. No, it's a chain meaning the mu I am relating it with the muscle still. Yeah, yeah no, we don't get rid of all that. We don't need it. You are you're now re representing it. Basically what what I've done from what I see now, just, just talk about just talk about anatomy. Basically so that's what I say. Yeah, right? that was a chain, so I'm saying that's fine. No, I mean the chain was the anatomical one. That that's um, we have the spiral chain. No I know about I know about chains and all that, but I'm saying don't need it, don't do that. That, that that's, that's conceptual. Okay. Just say I went from the you know, right um, trapezius then it led me down to the whatever muscle group we're going to talk about on those joints. Just talk, just talk about anatomical no, basically, terms. Basically, in anatomical terms, what I've done now, if I recap, is that I have done the soft tissue and articulation to actually turn your body into the right side. The back one, it wanted to go there, remember? Mm -hmm. it, it just went, uh, that shoulder, it wanted to go down, back. This wanted to turn, the articulation wanted to go there, yep. and there was this uh, tender spot which might have been taught also not to allow this motion to happen. So basically what I've done is just twisted her to the right side. Yeah. That's what I've done. That's it. It's so that But And that way you haven't broken anything down too much. I haven't. Yeah, because I don't want to, if you start re-representing things, yeah. then it's like, well it's not when he goes to, I remember in Henry Bortos' last book he talks about a uh, poster for um, Shakespeare, Hamlet. For so, we go and see Hamlet, and Hamlet has been, you know, it's funny how we take the play Hamlet. But when we say showing tonight a presentation of Hamlet, we don't say showing tonight a representation of Hamlet. We say a presentation because it's the acting of Hamlet, it's the acting out of Hamlet that's the reality, not the not the text that goes back to the seventeenth century. Mm -hmm. So it's the acting out that is actually Hamlet. So we're presenting it, not re-representing it. So when we're, when we're treating it, we need to treat it as a presentation, not a re-representation. We're doing it now. Yeah. And, then, and that, I think that's the key, that's the key issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the two steps I would come, first of all, is to okay, be aware of using the motion. And then the second step is you keep... You're becoming the person in a way. That's what I'm saying, becomes the person. So what's the third step? There's always three, there's always three. Yeah, well, Goethe said it's threefold, there's only threefold. So what is the third one? I suppose it, the, the effect of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. The outcome. Trying to fetch outcome? What? Yeah, the, the outcome is, is the issue. It's related to the, 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 the dynamic participation and everything. Yeah. Probably. But that keeps that keep, that keeps unfolding. That keeps unfolding all the time. Yeah.